Okay, this is part two, uh, the convex spherical mirror and the diverging lens. And I'm going to group these guys together because they're basically cousins. Uh, if you understand one, then you understand the other. And what makes them similar is that they both share a negative focal length. Now I haven't even explained what focal length is yet, but I'm basically just trying to kind of get it all out on the table right away so you can kind of uh, know what to anticipate. So what, first of all, let's start with the mirror. What is a spherical mirror? What that really means is it's literally a piece of a sphere. So here's a sphere. It has a center there. We'll call that C, the center of curvature. So we'll name that point there. And we'll call the distance that that uh, uh, center of curvature is from the mirror the radius. So the name of the point is C and its distance from the mirror is the radius of curvature. Now for the convex spherical mirror we won't need the whole sphere. We're going to actually take off half of it and this here will be the reflecting surface. So the objects will be over here on the left and the side uh, that we're going to be reflecting light off is going to be curved away from the objects. So they're vexed by the objects, so hence the term the convex mirror. Now before we do much of anything, let's first drop in a symmetry axis. Uh, that's going to go exactly uh, halfway. It's going to bisect the mirror. That's ca called the optic axis and uh, basically that separates the mirror into a top half and a bottom half. So let me drop in my first object uh, here and it's going to be infinitely far away. Uh, obviously I can't draw that here, I can't draw this infinitely far away. So you're going to just have to imagine. And remember that uh, our object distance for us in this class is always going to be positive. And so we have to imagine the light rays coming from this object parallel. Uh, as was discussed in the last video, if an object is really far away, the only light beams that are really going to reach the mirror are ones that are parallel, because if they're even slightly angled, they're going to go above and uh, below the mirror already. So we can draw in these light beams coming in, like so. And let me go ahead and just... Uh, I'll put the arrowheads on in a moment. Okay, so there's the uh, incoming light. So now we have to figure out how that's going to interact with the mirror. So in a mirror, the operating principle is reflection. So we need to set up the reflection. So the law of reflection is just that whatever angle you come in to the normal, you'll reflect off at that same angle um, on the other side of the normal. So we have to drop in our normals here for each of these light beams. Now, in this case, it's actually pretty easy to draw the normals because uh, they all emanate from the center of curvature. If you think about a sphere, uh, any line that's drawn out from the center will hit perpendicularly the surface. So those are going to be your normals. So let me go ahead and drop those in. So there we go. Um, I've dropped in the normals for these two guys right here. And um, this one, the optic axis, is already actually the normal. So um, now I just need to draw my reflected beams. Um, so there's the uh, reflected beams. Hopefully these are at reasonably equal angles. Uh, I did the best I could. So the reflected angles should be the same as the incoming angle to the normal. And it uh, looks like I forgot to include the uh, one that just bounces off like this. Um, so it comes in at zero degrees to the normal and it bounces out zero degrees to the normal. So there is my reflected light. And uh, of course the light doesn't change color, but I'm just trying to make this uh, diagram kind of clear. So I'm putting the reflected light in uh, red here so you can tell um, what it is. So here's what you can see is that the light comes in parallel but the action of this kind of mirror is actually to scatter the light so it uh, diverges it just by virtue of how it's shaped so it's shaped in this way so that 
light tends to get scattered or diverged by the mirror. So what if we were an observer somewhere over here uh, examining this light that's being bounced off the mirror, what would we see? Well, of course, all of the uh, mirrors and lenses, the whole principle is that whatever arrives at you, you think that it came directly from the source. So if you see this light kind of diverging like this, um, you don't realize that it got rerouted like that. You basically just take the light that arrives at you and trace it directly back in a straight line. So you're going to think that it came from here. So all of these light beams appear to emanate from a point somewhere right about here. Let me sketch that in, like so. So it appears that the light is actually emanating from a point back here um, behind the mirror. It's not, doesn't uh, look like it's coming from C, it's coming from a point right here. This point has a name. This point is called the focus. And its distance from the mirror is called the focal length. So adding to our list, we have a new point called the focus and uh, there is the uh, focal length. Now, if it looks like that is pretty much halfway, the focus is halfway between the mirror and the center of curvature, uh, to a high degree of approximation it is. So what we can say is that the focal length is half the radius of curvature, uh, and that's what we will use uh, for our calculations. Now again, why is it halfway? Don't worry about it. It comes from some derivations. Um, it's not even always true. It's just approximately true um, for certain kind of approximations uh, that we tend to make with these things to simplify them, so don't worry about that part. Now because the observer appears to think that the light is coming from here because of the way that the mirror treated the light, uh, it appears that there's something there. So that's our image. So when the object is infinitely far away, the image will be at this point called the focus. Now let me remind you from the last video that if the image happens to be on the same side as the outgoing light, then the image distance would be positive. Um, but that's not what we have here. Uh, you can clearly see the image is over on the other side. So there we have it, the image distance is negative. Now, I want to point out that the focal length actually has the same sign convention. So since the focal length itself is on the opposite side as the outgoing light, we give that a negative. So going back over here, we originally said that the focal length would be negative, and there you can see it. The focal length is negative. So again, when the object distance is positive infinity, the image appears at the focus, so the image distance is the same as the focal length, both of those being negative. Now, there's a formula which will give the relationship between the object distance, image distance, and focal length. And this, actually, this is our master formula. This is going to be the formula for every mirror and every lens we look at. In fact, I'll even show you a little bit later that the uh, plane mirror and the pane of glass we talked about in the first video, they are all coming from this one formula. So you can convince yourself here that if the uh, DO is plus infinity, this whole term goes to zero, and then you just get DI equals F. So the image appears at the focus. In this case, they both happen to be negative. So this is our master equation. and what I'm basically going to do is uh, kind of go through the results that come out of this. This deceivingly simple equation does come out with a lot of stuff. And so um, it's not important to not just plug and chug, but to have some idea of what all comes out of this. So there's a lot of signs to manage. Uh, DO is always positive, but these can be both plus and minus, as we'll see in the various cases. But um, ultimately, um, we don't want to just rely on sign conventions to guide us through. We want to have kind of an overarching idea of what the answers are going to be. So now uh, let's move our object in a little bit. There's our object. Uh, now it's going to be substantially closer and we want to see how that affects the uh, image. So uh, it turns out that the image is not going to be at the focus anymore. 
so that's a kind of a common misconception is that the uh, focus is somehow where the image always is. That's only where the image is if the object is at infinity. So we're going to find now that the image is actually not there anymore. It's actually going to move in. It's going to be closer to the uh, mirror than the focus. So the focus is a fixed point which tells us about ob when objects are at infinity where the images are but we'll find that the image moves here. So in uh, preparation for uh, having the light coming in let me drop in the same uh, couple normals that I was using before and here are my incoming light beams and what you notice about them of course since the object is closer the uh, light beams that arrive are substantially more divergent. They're not all parallel anymore. Uh, so there I have it. Uh, I've tried my best to have these reflect at equal angles. Uh, once again, it's just law of reflection. So uh, to an observer, it would appear that these light beams are now emanating from this location right here. So not at the focus anymore, but a point closer in. So now there will be appear to be an image right there an observer will see the light rays appear to be emanating from a point right here. And notice now that the image is actually substantially closer to the mirror uh, than it was before. So as the object moves in toward the mirror, the image moves in toward the mirror from the other side. So, so as the object moves in from plus infinity to zero, uh, the image will move from F to 0. Now how did I know that they both wound up at 0? Well, here's why. At the end here, you're basically just uh, reflecting off the flat part of the mirror. And so the normals for most of these light beams are going to kind of start to be all in line. And so you ha expect to be merging on plain mirror behavior. So as you get really really close to any kind of mirror the curvature is kind of flattened out and you don't necessarily um, you kind of just see mostly the flat part it's kind of like you know when you're standing on the earth uh, you know that it's curved but locally it sure looks pretty flat because the curvature is kind of uh, outside your uh, scope of where you are now I should also mention something about the magnification so the magnification we talked about fundamentally was the definition of the image height uh, as the, uh, and how it relates to the original object height. Now there's an alternative form right here that we're going to use. Uh, and again, don't worry about where it comes from, but it basically says that we can also figure out the magnification by using the image and object distances. So it's minus di over do. And one of the major conclusions that this seems to indicate is that when the image is closer than the object uh, you're always going to have a smaller number in the numerator and the magnification is always going to be less than one so that's what happens in this type of um, mirror. So I'm going to have you guys rely on this pretty heavily uh, in order to figure out the magnification um, just by looking at uh, which one is uh, closer which one is larger so if you plug in, we already know what happens to DO and DI, and if you plug those into this equation, you'll find that when the object's at infinity, uh, the image is at the focus and its magnification is zero, which, you know, isn't surprising because if the object really is truly is infinitely far away, um, there's nothing the mirror can do to uh, generate a finite sized image. So the uh, image is basically zero. And by the time you pull up the um, object to the mirror, we say we have to recover plane mirror behavior. So we are basically have to have a magnification of plus one. So if you remember the circle of fun from the plane mirror, uh, all of these are still true. They all imply each other. Um, the uh, magnification is plus. Uh, DI is indeed negative. Um, it is an upright image. Um, you can see that because the top light beam stays on top and the bottom light beam stays on the bottom so the image is in the same orientation um, and it is virtual as well because while it might you might think that something is here uh, something really isn't here light isn't really emanating from this point so with that all in mind uh, go ahead and play around with the uh, applet here that I've posted for you 
Um, and you can see this. Uh, so far away object uh, looks like I'm gonna have to pick.